strength, joy from God, our Creator, and from Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Well, today I'd like to start out with you in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 16. This is the Ten Commandments. God, one of them, He says, Honor your father and your mother, as the Lord your God commanded you, that your days may be prolonged, and it may go well with you in the land which the Lord your God gives you. Honor thy father and thy mother. Well, happy Mother's Day. I'd like to uh, look at honoring the, the second part of that, especially today, honoring our mothers. Uh, honoring uh, not only women who have children, but all women out there everywhere who have the heart of being a mother, even if they don't have uh, physical children, but share the love of a mother in their heart. So today, we honor you, and I'd like to talk with you for a few minutes about how women are just so blessed by God, especially not only being mothers, but in reflecting the great love that God for has for us as His children. So let's take a look at the scriptures and honor our mothers today, as well as all women and also God in Christ, how He saved us. So what can we say about women? <laughs> All right? Many sermons. I could keep going on for this one, right? Genesis 1. Let's start out there at the very beginning. It says, The Lord God said, Let us make man in our image, after our own likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, etc. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. And God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. So what's the first thing we can learn about women in this particular passage? Is that God created us male and female. So men and women were the same species. Isn't that great? Yes. And apart from that, there are a lot of differences between men and women. As much as our present day culture wants to say we're all just the same, there's a lot of uniqueness between men and women. And women are absolutely, fearfully, wonderfully, beautifully made by God, and especially in a lot of ways, uh, for motherhood. If you look, we, we talk differently, right, men and women. We behave differently, we often think differently, and we have different bodies. I mean, that's just plain apparent to everybody. Um, each suited to its own purposes. And just look how a woman's body is so beautifully and amazingly designed by God to have a womb. You know, guys don't have this, but you can carry a child in the secret, dark places of your own body and grow it up to be a new human being. That's just amazing, unbelievable, really, except that it happens. Breasts to give milk and nourish a new human being and to grow it up to be strong and come to fullness of manhood or womanhood. And I think women it seems, have an emotional sensitivity that is somehow lost to men. I don't know. Can I get an amen from the women on that? <laughs> we just don't get it a lot of times. See, men, it seems, have a, a, a distance vision. We can see sometimes really well in the future, but we miss a lot of close-in things that women pick up on. I remember when uh, Naomi was a little girl, and I'd you know, take her out as a toddler to go play on the playground, and I'd be all ready to go, and Naomi would be ready to go, and Beth would come along and say, where's her coat? And I'd be like, does she need one? I, I didn't see that. But she could see close in stuff that, as a dad, you know, I pretty much missed. But Beth didn't miss because she was designed to see close in. Pick up especially on the needs of her children. Um, one Christian author, Stu Weber, said, uh, men are kind of like God's design of a pickup truck. <laughs> we're, we're really like great off the road. We don't have a lot of, you know, maintenance required, utility vehicle. Um, you lift up the hood of a man and, you know, there's really not a lot there. It's all like, here's this and here's this. And it's kind of easy to figure out. Women, he, he said, are sort of like God's design of a Maserati sports car. <laughs> Fancy, super sleek, highly sensitive, finely tuned polished machine, and you lift up the hood, and it's just kind of a little too complicated to figure out. <laughs> I don't know. In fact, uh, Vivian and I like to watch that comedian who says, you know, men's brains are kind of like compartmentalized with the little boxes. And we have a special box, which is our favorite box. Among, among all the boxes, this is our favorite one. It's called the nothing box. 
where men can actually sit and think of absolutely nothing. And that is our favorite box. That's why we can do things like fishing for hours and think about nothing. But he, the comedian says, but a woman's brain, it's all connected, and they can't conceive of not thinking about something. And so they get very frustrated sometimes when they say, what are you thinking about? We say nothing. They think we're lying, but no, that's our favorite box. <laughs> So we're, we're, we're unique, we're differently designed, fearfully and wonderfully made are you women, so beautiful, so amazing, created, and especially in a lot of ways, for being a mother. And uh, so how do you, though, reflect the great love of God for us in Jesus Christ? I'd like to talk about honoring you and God in Christ today. So first of all, mothers give birth to their children. And you know, God gives birth to us too. Think about that. There's not a person here in this room today that doesn't have a mother who gave birth to them. Right? We are all here because they carried us in their womb, in the secret places of the earth, the scripture says. And when we were conceived, each of us, our mothers, amazingly designed by God's degree, uh, decree, a, a placenta that carried the mother's blood to the child and all the nourishment of all the food she ate went into the child and her blood or the placenta carried all the waste products away and uh, she nurtured us. And in the 40 weeks of our development, when we're being formed there for about nine months or so, women suffer a lot of things, don't they? I mean, you go uh, have a lot of changes take place in your body uh, to men, it's like, wow. I remember when I was in Maine and Beth was pregnant with Naomi and, and uh, she asked me one day, she's like, I've got to get a, a roast beef sandwich on rye with mayo. It's the only thing I can eat. You must get it for me. It was a hot summer's day, but I got on my bike and I rode down to the deli and I got the roast beef sandwich on rye with mayo and I rode back, delivered, to her, delivered it to her and she says, how do you expect me to eat that? She just, I mean, crazy things were happening with her body. Amazing things. And it was through much pain and sweat and tears that a lot of you women have brought children into the world. Sometimes always, maybe not with all the best words as you're going through your labor. <laughs> to bring your children into the world. But you know what? God worked in your womb. He's the, he's the master uh, craftsman. And your, your womb was like his workbench, his workshop, his tool bench. And he's in there in your womb, designing a new human being. That is a miracle. Like David says in Psalm 139, he says, God, you formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Uh, when I was being made in secret, my frame wasn't hidden from you, intricately wrought in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance, and in your book were written every one of them the days that were formed for you. For me when as yet there was none of them. How precious to me are thy thoughts, O God. How vast the sum of them. If I were to count them, they're more than the sand when I'm awake, I'm still with thee. So isn't it amazing that God worked inside your womb like a beautiful master designer and your womb is his workshop. He put us together in our mom's wombs. So they gave birth to us and women, we honor you and I honor my mom today for giving birth to me. Praise God. But you know what? God gave birth to you too. In the same way, and women are reflecting that for us. Because Jesus says, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot enter or see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said, How can a man be born again when he's old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And so how were you born again? Born, not just of your mothers this time, but you were born of the Spirit of God, of Jesus Christ, by faith in Him and in the waters of baptism. By water and the Spirit, God birthed you by His Spirit. And to all who received Him, who believed in Jesus' name, God gave the power to become children of God, who were born, not of blood or the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. So, women, you are reflecting... This beautiful mystery, how God has brought us into new life by bringing us to be born again in Jesus Christ. By a woman, our mothers were born citizens of earth, and you gave us life. 
by the Spirit of God, we're born citizens of heaven, and we're given eternal life in Jesus Christ the Savior. And just as you had sweat and tears and pain sometimes going through your giving birth, so God, through the sweat and blood and tears of Christ upon that cross, birthed you into a beautiful new world that is eternal life in the kingdom of Christ forever. So, women, we thank you. We honor you for that and reflecting God's love for us and birthing us as God birthed us in Christ. Now, again, when you gave birth to us, we can thank God that you rejoiced over us in the same way that God rejoices over you when you're born again in Christ. Do you believe that? Do you believe that God rejoices and delights in you in Jesus Christ when you're born again in Him? This is a mother rejoices when her child is born. Listen to what Jesus says. Let's open up to John 16. Jesus says this, verse 21. He says, uh, When a woman is in travail, in labor, that is, she has sorrow, because her hour has come. But when she's delivered of her child, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a child is born into the world. Is that true? When you're oh, going through all that pain of labor, and you're thinking... Only the pain. And then when your child is born, it, poof, just vanishes for a joy that a child is born in the world. It's gone like that. And I remember, remember when Naomi was born in Beth, actually, unbelievably, was in, was in uh, labor, really, for a month. I know it sounds crazy, but she had the Braxton Hicks, and she was contracting like this, but she didn't have any muscles, we learned later on, to push downwards. Uh, and so she was, Naomi's in there for, you know, a month ago. Like this. And eventually, two weeks late, uh, we had a, Beth had a C-section. And, um, and Naomi was delivered. And there's my wife on the operating table. She is all opened up. You know, I wasn't allowed to look. Blood, etc. Perspiring. I mean, she would be, in terms of, you know, a human condition, not looking so good. Uh, should be in pain, but when she heard, you know, it's a girl. Actually, the first thing we heard was, look at all that hair. And then we heard, it's a girl. And when we heard, it's a girl, Beth goes, a girl? It's a girl? Oh, that's a girl. And she forgot all of her pain for joy that a child was born into the world, even though she's not even sewn up yet. She forgets it all for joy that her child is born into the world. And I want to ask you, do you believe that God has that same joy and delight in you when you're born again into Jesus Christ by faith in Him. Some of us go through life not thinking God delights in us. He delights in His people so much He makes even a woman's joy in her child look like nothing next to His joy over you. For God, Jesus says, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. And God says in Isaiah 62, You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem in the hand of God. For the Lord delights in you, so your God shall rejoice over you. Women, have you had joy in your child when it was born? Well, think about that joy and think God delights in you even more, far more than that, when you are in Jesus Christ. So, thank you women for reflecting the joy of God for us in Jesus Christ when you had joy over your child. We honor you for that. Here's another one. Ready? No sooner were we born than our mothers began to feed us and to provide for us, right? You know, same as God. As soon as we're born again in Christ, He starts feeding you with milk of the Word, right? Out of the breasts of the pages of Scripture, in comes new flowing life, and you grow up strong and mature in Jesus. You know, women, you're reflecting the love of God in that way. Remember when Naomi was born once again, uh, she was brought in that night, and Beth smiled and inspected Naomi, her little baby, in every little detail. And she began to nurse. And there's a bond that develops between a mother and a child that, you know, is even lost to men. It's just so amazing. Research has shown that a, a child coming out of the womb and already recognizes its mother's voice. Isn't that beautiful? That it prefers her language to any other language on the earth. And in the first 12 to 36 hours, 
she, a child prefers her face to the face of, any, of anybody else, of any stranger. There's a bond, mother to child and child to mother. That's once again a reflection, a picture of God is put into full view of his great love and nurture for us. You know what the bond is called? The covenant, the new covenant of grace in Jesus Christ and the forgiveness of your sins. There is a bond so inseparable, so beautiful, as even beyond that of a mother and her child. God says this in Deuteronomy 32. He says, the Lord's portion is his people, Jacob and his, his allotted heritage. He found them as a, in a desert land and in the howling wilderness of the wilderness, the waste of the wilderness. He encircled him. He cared for him. He kept him as the apple of his eye, like an eagle that spreads out its nest, that flutters over its young, spreading out its wings, catching them, bearing them up on its feathers. The Lord alone did lead him, and there was no foreign god with him. He made him ride on the high places of the earth. He ate the produce of the land. He made him suck honey out of the rock and oil out of the flinty rock and gave him milk. Isn't that beautiful? God's care for his people. Women, you are reflecting the great love of Jesus Christ for your child. God's love for us in Jesus Christ. And God feeds us with milk by creatures. Like Paul who says, I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you weren't ready for it. 1 Thessalonians 2, he says, We were gentle among you, like a nurse taking care of her children, like a woman who's breastfeeding. We watched over you, O Thessalonians. And God is feeding us daily with the word, the milk, the honey, the, the good, stronger food of his word, so that we would grow up and become fully mature people in Christ, no longer tossed to and fro, carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the cunning of men, by their craftiness and deceitful wiles, but rather speaking the truth in love. We grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, etc. Isn't that beautiful? So God's, you know, raising us up to be like Jesus, strong adults, but it's by his word. And in the same way, women, you are reflecting that as you take care of your children. So we honor you. You are a picture of God's love for us in Jesus Christ. That's beautiful. How tender he is with us and how mighty. Next, consider this one. Women, are you jealous of your child? To protect them, to provide for, to take care of your child with an abiding love? Now, you see this even in nature, a, woman, a woman's protective love, right? Consider a sparrow who takes on a fox who's going after her chicks. Now, the sparrow has no strength next to the fox, but she'll go after him with an abandon and drive him away because she's a mother. And in the same way, I remember when uh, Beth was pregnant with Naomi, we were at a seminary, and um, we were walking down some stairs, and I by accident bumped her. You know what Beth did? Yeah. Boom! <laughs> she hit me! And I was like, what? What? What did I do? Whoa! She's like, I don't know what came over me. I just thought, you know, i got to protect my baby. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> Something strange is going on here. She was like, I don't know what happened, but it's a woman's love. In fact, there was a story of a, uh, a California, I believe it was, um, in Yosemite some years ago, where uh, a, a guy was filming a grizzly bear and her cups, photography, and he didn't know, but a mountain lion snuck up behind him and pounced on him and would have killed him, except he had a backpack, which prevented him, the mountain lion, from getting into his neck. And he thought he was a goner. But you know what? Before I knew what was happening, that mother of a grizzly bear came over with a great muddy outstretched claw, batted that cat off the guy's back like a wet dish rag, and then went back to taking care of her cups. It's a mother's instinct and a mother's love to provide, protect her children. And even in this case, someone even not her child. And do you know that that is God's same love and protection for you? Women, you're reflecting God's love for us in this. Jeremiah once said, I hear the whispering of many terror on every side. Let's denounce them. Denounce them, they say. Say all my familiar, familiar friends watching for my fall. Perhaps he'll be deceived. Then we can overcome him and take our revenge on him. But Jeremiah said, But the Lord is with me as a dread warrior. Therefore my persecutors will stumble. They will not overcome me. Isn't that true? God, like a great 
mother, jealous for her children, takes care of us, and don't get between a mother and her children, don't they get between God the Father and His. I remember when I was in first grade, you know, I was kind of slow. In fact, we were joking when my dad was here just recently. I said, you know, I had dyslexia when I was a boy, and he was joking. Oh, we thought we were just slow. No, he was just joking. <laughs> but I was very slow. I was very slow, and, my, and actually my first grade teacher wanted to hold me back in, uh, in first grade because I just couldn't keep up. I didn't get things. Dyslexic, really. Um, but you know what? My mom did. She marched right in there to that first grade teacher and said, You are not holding back my son from the first grade. Don't get between a mom and her child, right? And I went into the second grade and eventually I caught up uh, with God's help. But look at that. If you get, if anybody in all the world or the devil wants to get and attack you, God's children, watch out. He's like a mother grizzly bear. Oh, he's a dread warrior. He will protect and he guards you. Like an eagle fluttering over its young, he protects and guards his own in Jesus Christ. And if you try it, you won't try it twice. Women, you reflect God's love for us. Yes. Here's another one. How about a woman's unrelenting love for her children? At least the godly ones do. You know, some mothers you know, do fail on these things, of course, and all to some degree, but... How quick are women usually to forgive and show compassion when we go astray and return with a sorry? You know, I, uh, I didn't get in a lot of trouble as a child, but I remember one day I was um, throwing acorns at the window in our house, and I thought it was kind of fun to make the little sounds. One day I thought, well, acorns are fun, let's throw a little rock, a little pebble. <laughs> and I heard crack, and, and uh, I broke the window. Now let me ask you a question. Who do you think it went to, my mom or my dad? <laughs> for lenient justice and mercy I went to my mom and she of course gave me mercy I said you going to tell dad well yeah I have to tell dad of course he was kind and merciful too but it's our mothers that we usually go to because guess what women you are reflecting the great love that God has for us in Jesus Christ quick to forgive super to show leniency whenever we turn to him it says in the Bible, God says to his people, Return, faithless Israel, says the Lord, for I won't look on you in anger. For I am merciful, says the Lord. I will not be angry forever. Just acknowledge your guilt. That you rebelled, uh, rebelled against the Lord your God, scattered your favors among the strangers of every green tree. That you have not obeyed my voice, says the Lord. Return, faithless Israel, for I am your master. I'll take you one from a city, two from a family, and I'll bring you to Zion. Do you believe that about Jesus Christ and about God our Father? That He's quick to forgive when we repent and come to Him through Jesus Christ? Do you believe that? Say amen. 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 He is so super fast. And women, you are reflecting. God's put that into you to reflect Him in that super mercy. Isaiah 66, God says, As one whom his mother comforts, so will I comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. You see, and your heart shall rejoice, your bones shall flourish like grass, and it shall be known that the hand of the Lord is with his servants. Now, give you encouragement today? Women, you're reflecting the great love of God in this. Because Jesus said, Come unto me, all you who are weary, heavy laden. I'll give you rest. You know, believe on me. I won't be angry. I won't be, you know, I won't smash you. I will be quick to forgive. And I won't remember your sins anymore. For I'm gentle and lowly in spirit. You'll find rest for your souls. Women, God's put that into you. Male and female, He created them. He put into us special things for a man. Special things for women. And women, you are reflecting a great aspect of God's own heart and soul in this. That's so beautiful. We honor you. And we especially honor God. So we can say with the psalmist, I've calmed and quieted my soul like a child quieted at his mother's breast. Like a child that is quieted is my soul. And we know that we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ the righteous. He's the expiation for our sins and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. You come to Him. You come to Jesus Christ. He will be quick to show mercy because He is tender and gentle and quick to forgive. You reflect this, O women. And then uh, there's another one. When we go astray, can a mother forget her child? Even when the child goes into wrong paths, so also doesn't forget us. 
You ever feel estranged from God? Ever feel lost in your sin? Like you're far off, forsaken, abandoned, alone, and forgotten? David once said, How long, O Lord? Will you forget me forever? Where are you, Lord? And when Israel pined away in their sins from going away off the path of life, groaned under their punishment, thought that God was gone, that he'd forgotten them. You know what God said? Listen up. He said in Isaiah 49, Can a woman forget her sucking child that she should no more have compassion on the son of her womb? What's the answer? A woman can't forget. He says, Even these may forget, yet I will not forget you. Behold, I've graven you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. And Jesus says, Aren't five sparrows sold for two pennies? And not one of them is forgotten before God. Why, even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, you're of more value than many sparrows. Women do not forget the children, and God will not forget you. He is our father, not our mother, but women, you are reflecting the great care of God for us. And so we honor you today as we honor God. Here's one more. Women, you make a home. You know, when I when it was at college, you go into a, a guy's dorm, and what's it look like? Dick, what's it look like? It's just bare walls and a desk, right? You go to a, a female dorm, and it's like, you know, curtains, and there's flowers, and it's decorated. It's a home. See, men often make a home house, and women make it a home. At least it's true in our home. Beth has decorated it, and it is colorful because she is there. Now, I'll tell you, God is both a father to us who provides for us a house, but also, like a woman, makes it beautiful for us. Jesus says, In my Father's house there are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And when I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and take it to myself, that where I am you may be also. And believe me, that is one beautiful home. Amen? Amen. Full of decorations, full of colors, full of all the glories of a home and not just a house. God has prepared for you in Jesus Christ. And women, you're once again reflecting the love of God in this for us in Jesus. And we thank you. Author John Kilger once said of the love of mothers that it's stronger than steel, softer than down, more resilient than a green sapling on the hillside. It closes wounds, melts disappointments, and enables the weakest child to stand tall in the fields of adversity. And same with God and his love for us. It is stronger than steel, softer than down, more resilient than the green sapling. And he makes you to stand as more than a conqueror through him who loves you on a field of adversity. So, women today, we honor you. We, you are just so fearfully, so wonderfully made, high and exalted and beautiful in God's sight. We honor you as mothers. And for those who have not been able to have children, but who have a mother's heart, we honor you as well for showing us the love of our Savior and Jesus Christ, our Lord, and putting it on display for us. So we'll conclude with this good word from God that he has for us in Jesus. Hearken to me, all house of Jacob, all the remnant of the house of Israel, who've been born by me from your birth, caring from the womb, even to your old age I am he, and to gray hairs I will carry you. I have made you, and I will bear you. I will carry you, and I will save you. Happy Mother's Day in Jesus' name.